coming to you live from inside, outside, and all around our houses in this COVID-inspired lockdown. This is Calm Down with Malk and Brayden. Join us tonight as we have special guests, musical guests, video of the week, and who knows what else happens when we turn the satellite on. Please give a big hand to our house band, George and the Jetsons. Remember to calm down and welcome your hosts, Malk and Brayden. Here we are. Amazing, Brayden. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the very last episode of Calm Down, our season finale. So great that you can join us. My name is Malk. That guy is Brayden. Brayden, how are you doing? I'm good. Uh, look, mixed emotions, mate. Mixed emotions. Um, Already. I just can't get over there. It was like, yep, nothing. Oh, no, okay. Sorry. I Look, big big night, massive show. Huge uh, show. Darlo coming in uh, live. Uh, Tegan Higginbotham uh, coming in live. Yes. And waiting in the wings, uh, the one-man poetry slam. I don't know if anyone calls him that, but they could. You can pick it up now. John yeah. McCarrow, what a show. It's going to be, look, in the, the correct NRL parlance, uh, huge. Uh, absolutely oh. massive. Huge show, Rabs. Yeah, uh, for sure. Look, we're glad that you've joined us and not the Broncos, Parramatta's whitewash that it's going to be, uh, which no one enjoys the NRL, least of all now that they're playing to an empty stadium. We're glad that you can make it. Guys, remember, apart from the fact that we've got all of those great people joining us, the way that we love to get you involved in the show is to whack a comment um, under the feed, and we can include it like this, just to prove it's very live. Look at this. Phil Dokmanovich, so excited for this. I'm excited too, Phil. That is the sign of a man that has three kids, a wife, and not much going on. Um, it's great that he could be here, but it's marvellous nonetheless. Look, Rob Hanks tuning in to make sure it's not it's the finale. Hashtag not come. I'm not sure we like the hashtag, quite frankly. Um, it is absolutely the finale. Absolutely. absolutely the finale. This is the serious finale, friends. We are done like a dishpan. If you get a comment featured on the screen, if you make us laugh, if you entertain us, then you are in the running to win what, Brayden? What did I get to win? This. A post pack. What? A post pack. The T-shirt is in the post oh, pack. It's ready to go. It is ready to go. Here's my, go. Here's my Sharpie. I right. will pen your name. Tonight. Tonight. We'll have to get your address offline, but, you know, yeah. it'll happen. It's ready to go. And this pen will have run out by the end of tonight's show, so I can send you an empty pen. Uh, an empty pen. Or you can just accept that you're going to get a shirt from Brayden, and that's about as <laughs> of it. Yeah. Um, look, but we're glad that you could be here. The shirt is out of the frame. It's in the post pack. Your comments yeah. count. Look, it's great to have uh, Will Nicholas joining us. This is the greatest moment of my life. Your wife will have words about that, I'm sure. Um, uh, Steve Corkinay, I want that sweaty Jurassic Park shirt. It has been washed, Steve. It's also not the first time Steve Corkinay said that. Um, no, I know. He's really pushing the sweaty line, isn't he? Now, Malk, um, before we before we jump in, uh, serious business, handbrake, if you like. Right. Okay. Uh, you haven't asked how I'm feeling about the finale. No, no. Okay. Um this is National uh, Reconciliation Week. Yep. And uh, so we want to acknowledge that, um, that, that all the work of this show is done on uh, land that was stolen and never uh, ceded. Ceded, yeah. Um, we also want to acknowledge that, uh, that the, the terrible events um, from America uh, yeah. that, that has just sparked controversy and to say that we are, we are outraged and, and we stand in solidarity, um, but also we can't be ignorant that that, that's happening in our own backyard as well. Yeah. Um, so we need to uh, we need to have a good, long, hard look at ourselves as uh, people in this country mm. and our relationship with the first peoples. Um, yes. Oh yeah. Uh, look, not a, not dampener, just a bit of real talk. I think. Um, oh, hashtag real talk all the time, man. Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to. You know, we chatted about this in rehearsal. We wanted to say it straight up. Um, but yeah, it's a. Uh, and, you know, and great to have a proud Yorta Yorta man, uh, Darlo, coming up at the end. We'll, we'll chat about that. Yes. Um, and stuff. But, yeah, we just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, sorry day earlier in the week. Um, but moving right along to the important stuff. Yes. Well, Not that that wasn't important. 
Yeah, that's like, look, we'll, we'll edit that out in production. Sure, right. That'd be great. Shifting gears. Right. There, is, there are two reasons why this is our final episode. What was that, Brian? Reason it's number one. Girls. Yeah, you tell us. Mission accomplished. Oh, mate, one of them. Right there, Mr. President. We, st- we set out at the beginning of this journey to help people calm down during isolation. And we did. I think we were the only people doing the heavy lifting, honestly, Braden. <laughs> yep. Yeah, the fact that and a whole country's response has been as positive and, and good as it is, yep. the fact that the number of people that have had, you know, infected with coronavirus so low, because we encourage people to keep calm. We flattened the curve, Malk. We uh, by ourselves. <laughs> yeah, so that that's the main reason. Mission accomplished. But the other reason yes. is financial. Yes. Do we need to have a budget well, meeting on air? Well, each episode costs roughly $480 to produce. Yeah, true. Last week, last week, I in in a in an a bid to keep us afloat, I mm. offered a seat in the green room. Yes, you for, did. For a bargain price of 500 bucks. Bargain price of 500 bucks. Would it would have kept us would have kept us on it would have paid for next week's episode. No can do. And just so that people know, this could have been your view, friends. That could have been your view. You could have been here <laughs> in the studio watching me press the buttons. <laughs> Hang on, I'm going to give you a full screen so they get the full effect. Oh, yeah. There you go. Here, you could have been here. But in no, the shed. you're there. No, you're there. So I'm here. He's there. Joel's in the group. I don't know. Yeah. You could have been talking to Joel. You could have been hanging yeah, out with him. I you. don't know. I don't know which camera which camera to go back to. I think <laughs> camera one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Camera one. Camera one. Four cameras. You guys are which one to go back to? Um, <laughs> look, it's really good. Uh, yep. Christy Morgan, I've always wanted an empty pen and a t-shirt that is too big for me. I hope I win. Look, with that kind of attitude, anything is possible. Uh, Daniel yep. Gibb, wow, the shirt is actually being given away. Maybe this is the finale. Maybe it is Daniel Gibb, and we are giving away our prize. The reason that you would tune in. Oh, um, it is the season finale. We do have guests. We probably should push on with the first one. What do you reckon, B? Mate, yes. He <laughs> told him he'd be in the green room for three minutes. It's been 10. <laughs> Let's hope he's still there. Look, anything is possible. This person, uh, as Braden mentioned before, uh, what was it, what, what did you term him as? He's the one-man poetry slam, Mo. One-man poetry slam. Uh, dare I say, he is impending Australia's next poet laureate. Please yep. welcome Joel McCaro to the screen right now. Hello, Joel. There he is. Hello, friends. Hi, how you going? Look at this. This is so what, organized. What do you think about that uh, that name, mate? One Man Poetry Slam. One Man Poetry. I've never been called that before in my life, but I'm willing to run with it. You can call me the One Man Poetry. You can call me anything you want, Brayden. Fantastic. Wow, that's an offer. Yeah, that is an yep. offer. I've never said that to anyone before. Welcome. How, how, so, Joe, without being indiscreet, how's um, uh, the poetry business? How is the poetry business? During COVID-19, how's the poetry business? Yes. <laughs> it's, am I allowed to swear on this? I don't know if I'm Yes. Allowed. You can make yep. your choices. It's, My it's, kids are in bed. Oh, great, great. Um, there is, there is, it's shit all. There's nothing happening in the poetry business. No. Uh, most of, as a poet, I do a lot of stuff in... Um, in schools and conferences and festivals and everything yep. of mine has been cancelled. So it's kind of yep. working out how do I take what I do and make it online and all that kind of stuff. But obviously things are beginning to, in Australia anyway, beginning to come back to actually being able to touch people. Um, my yep. daughter went back to, um, back to uh, what's it called, childcare the other day for the first yep. time. And her favourite thing, her most exciting thing, we said, what, do you, what did you love about childcare? As she came home the first day, she said, Daddy, I got to touch people. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Fantastic. Which kind of sounds a little strange, but for a three year old. It says a lot about what goes on in the Macaro household, I <laughs> For a three year old. Social distancing, can't be too safe. <laughs> yeah, Dad's got to earn the money. <laughs> That's what um, it is. Um, it look, I'm, I'm just while we've got this now, before I know Braden's got a, a list of questions, Joel, so thank you Sorry. so much for being a part of this. No worries. Um, I think it's probably fair, Braden, on air production meeting, um, that given that poetry, the poetry business, not so great right now, that we could even. You know, it's a pay per question situation. Oh, that's a if great people idea. want to ask a question for John McCarrow, it'll cost you, I don't know, 50 cents a letter. I don't know. What do you reckon? Yep. 
Sure. I mean, <laughs> and we could give some of that to Joel. That, that you know, <laughs> well, he can have a cut. That's no worries. Yeah, it's easy. like ten percent of that will do me fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all I need. Yeah, for sure. Keep we can negotiate contracts on a on air. And now, uh, mate, uh, this this that's is something book. people can do. Yeah, this is your that's your name uh, right there. Right there. Um, and if people turn to about in it as well. Yeah. It? If people turn to about page three, they'll actually see my name as well. Uh, just below Danielle Strickland, whoever that is. Um, Did you write this book? No, no that's not mine. No. no. We're focusing here. Did you write this um, book? No, no, that was Andrew Root, I think. Oh, actually, uh, you want to something? Malk. I got this book today. Just I'm hijacking it for a second. I got this book today <laughs> from Andrew Root. And look, there's an inscription in it. Wow. See that for the friends at home? There we no. go. I'm going to read it out. It says, to Malk, (laughs) the most interesting, handsome, and wise Australian I know. Wow. Way more than that one guy. What's his name? (laughs) Brayden. I'll give you eight bucks if it actually says that. uh, Joel, (laughs) look, Tim Everest has read this. Get that comment up here. Let's do that. Yes, please. Get that up here. Look at that. Unsolicited promo. about 30 bucks. Oh, thank and, you for reading and, my book. The dreads are not coming back. I cut the dreads off and I was like, I should have done this years ago. I feel like yeah. a free new man. It's a very sunset moment for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. great. It's slow motion in, in post. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> Tim, uh, shout out to Tim. He said, it, Tim was on a couple of weeks ago. He's had the best beard on the show. Oh, um, yes. Well, I've, I've read it, obviously, and I love it. Um, and I also got to go to a super cool book launch at Fairfield. Feels like th- oh, yeah. 20 years ago, but Eight. might have even been earlier this year. Um, well, this is the – here's your sh- shameless sh- – What? why should people read the book? And they should, but from the author. Sure. Right. So the book is called Woven, A Faith for the Dissatisfied. Um, because I reckon a lot of people are dissatisfied. A lot of people go through times of dissatisfaction um, in faith, in life, in the world that they are a part of. When we look at the world today with everything happening, when we look at the States um, with George Floyd happening, when we look at Australia, as he was mentioning before, um, the reality of Indigenous situation within Australia, we have got to question and challenge the reality of our world. And in doing so, I think it also makes us question and challenge the reality of faith, the reality of how we see God in the world, how we see ourselves in the world, that we I too often have made Jesus into a, um, a rich white um, Western middle-class man. And uh, a lot of the book is kind of about challenging those realities, bringing a challenge to how we see God, how we see the world, um, and trying to open people up to listen to the voices that are not three white men sitting in the the virtual room. Do you know what I mean? Can't relate. Can't relate at all. No idea. No idea. It's about Uh, kind of my journey of of dissatisfaction, my journey mm. coming out of conservative evangelical world and beginning to question that and challenge that, but also trying to, not just kind of throw the, I think I say in the book, not just throw the baby of faith out with the bathwater of Christian culture. How can we actually mm. wrestle through and hold on to belief and faith in these times as well? Well, it sounds yeah. like a good book. I'll have to read it. Oh. What, what's, um, what's great is I've, I've heard Joel um, perform a few times and there's, you know, there's albums on iTunes as well. And once you've heard Joel speak, you can actually read the book with Joel's sort of tone and rhythm. <laughs> right. And, um, yeah. The you boys were told not to look lustfully at the ground. It's just, <laughs> it's just wonderful. It's so good. It's like having him um, read it to you. I love it. Well, there, there is yeah. actually an audio book, but maybe I should have got you to do the audio book for Oh, me. mate, now we're talking. Uh, but there is look, an audio book. You can get it from Audible and all other places like that. For great. Good. After, That's excellent. After tonight, mate, I've got nothing to do. So, you know, I'll... Uh, I'll have my people talk to your people. Sally Yabsley Bell's got a question there, Malk. Hi, oh, um, with acknowledging Nina Evans, first of all. Hi, guys. So great to have a quality guest. Oh, good to have Joel. How good to have Joel on the program. Thanks, Nina. Yeah, fabulous. Yeah. If question. you go to Nina's house, the bee sting down the road at the bakery is the best bee sting <laughs> in Australia. Great. Oh, Good call. <laughs> Sally yeah. Yabsley Bell has a question <laughs> to Joel. What is your favourite word, word to rhyme with Jesus? Please tell me it's not Jesus. 
not Jesus, maybe Jeebus. That was that was from The Simpsons, Jeebus. wasn't it? Was that from yes, the absolutely. Save me, Jeebus. <laughs> Je- save yep. me, Jeebus. Um, I don't know what else rhymes with. I'm not great with rhymes. I don't do much. Oh come on! <laughs> like you asking no, no, it with I don't <laughs> Where, yeah, no. You got nothing at this no. point. I can barely ride cat and hat. Um, <laughs> Mate, here we Jesus, go. Uh, I don't know. Brayden should do yes. some slam poetry to replace Acarona Pella. That's a great That's, idea. Yes. Isn't that it? is a wonderful idea. What hey, about hashtag collab, Joel? Hashtag collab? Oh, we, we, yeah, that's an option. <laughs> All right. Hashtag real talk. He totally backed away from that. Like, yeah, that... Than I've seen a man run. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Look, I'll I'll put out some 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 lyric, and uh, we can Jesus we can see sneezes, what happens. I like Jesus sneezes. Yeah. That's a good one, Will. Yeah, excellent. And look at this. Will's wife. Come in there. Come Will's on. wife realized the only way to spend time with him was to watch Calm Down. So welcome, Amanda. <laughs> uh, great to have you both tuning in. I am looking uh, forward to the opportunity where we find that we have to rhyme Jesus with tweezers uh, because, mmm, you think about that one. Jesus um, sneezes with his tweezers I up can't. his Pleasers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Melissa Wang says, hi, Joel. Melissa Wang. Yes. Yeah, oh, hey, Melissa, rocking hair. Look at that hair. That's fantastic. Mate, it's crackle isn't it? Clicking fingers for me too. Yeah, oh, mate. Well, well, no, let's – I'm looking comment. at the – I'm, yeah, I know, and I'm looking at the time. Um, so we need to keep moving. Joel, yes. what, I'm hoping you'll still say yes because we chat about it during the week. But uh, if Malk and I shut up for a bit, have you got something, uh, have you got a poem for us, for the people I, at home? I do. I have a poem. Um, it depends what you want it on, really, but maybe uh, the one I was going to do, I was thinking maybe I actually I'll do one that I wrote in um, in America. Um Great. As I just with the with the George Floyd thing happening at the moment and yep. what an atrocity that is. So maybe I'll read this from my book Hollowed Out Lungs. It's a bit it doesn't quite have the uh, the comedy that calmed down. Maybe it's a bit more of a serious poem, but some Bring things it. are serious. Some people need We to. can take that. That's right. Yep. Uh, uh, it's a poem called Violence. When the world comes at you all bristling with a fear disguised as power, disguised as patriotism, disguised as politic and protection, a deflection when the world pulls a knife held to the throat of our common humanity, when blood drips from black skin upon the counter of this two-bit diner somewhere in the battlefield of America, when the bully holds up his fist to kiss our innocence, or perhaps in the end it is our naivety when fists are raised regardless in prisons filled with peasants upon Mexican borders, in West Wing corridors, presidential tweets in the foreground playground where fists turn to bullets in mosques and in churches, in the alleyways behind the mansions where the homeless play pretend and the children play cowboys and Indians and surely those Indians know who they are in this equation. And then my three-year-old son tells me over the phone today that he shall be the one to shoot the baddie dead with his gun. And I get off the phone and I cry at what we have done. This gut punch to his innocence. How quickly the violence of life comes to us so young. When the world wants to fight you, what do you do? When the world wants to fight you, what do you do? As for me, I'm, I'm learning slowly to disarm my own heart. I'm learning to lower my fists. I'm naming my own violence. I stop making excuses. I look at the person behind raised fists and I try to listen to their story. I face my own privilege. I write my own poetry. I take what has been given me and I give it out to the world. I teach boys not to think that they are better than girls. And I teach girls that their power is theirs alone. I choose the small actions, the ones I hope are filled with great courage. Like going home, sitting with my son, looking him in the eyes and telling him that there is no such thing as baddies, just people who make bad choices. And I tell him that every single day, he shall choose the type of person he is to become. And I shall be right there with him as he does. That we may lower our fists together, son. That we may lower our fists together. 
Wow. There's the poem. I know it's more of a full on one, but I think it's. Big that stuff, man. Nice. That was amazing. Thank you. That's really, great, really man. good. Thank you. Yeah, it's one of those things that I wrote when I was in the States, but it just sadly is one of those things that keeps on coming back. Mm. Uh, yeah. But, for sure. That sadly is appropriate again and again and again. Yep. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Mate, thank you so much. Uh, we've got to go chat to Tegan, but uh, I've always found comfort and challenge in your words um, yes. and and your friendship. It means a lot. So thanks for coming on Calm Down, mate, for our big finale. Um, My pleasure. There's plenty, been plenty of love in the comments and the chat, and, yeah, thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Thanks, friends. So good to be with you. Have a great rest of the night. I'm just glad you know Cheers, the name, Joel. See you, mate. See ya. <laughs> what a, what a guy. guy. So yeah, no. and and friends, uh, Joel's books, get them, read them, give them to the people you know. Um, yeah, they, yeah. Their story's worth hearing. So um, I've got to yeah. hack down that woven. That sounds amazing. So I'm yeah, keen no, to check that out big, big time. Um, well, I mean, this is the high calibre of guest that people have come yeah. to expect from Calm Down. And quite rightly, I mean, we have rolled out the reddest of red carpets, right, and it's been pretty amazing. So... In recognizing that this is, mate, you okay? You seem you seem a bit down. Oh, mate, I'm trying to be up. I'm trying to be up. It's just you know, like this, like that was so good, and and you every what? episode had its highlights, and you know, it's oh, I, I don't, I'm just sad. I'm just sad that sure. this is the end. I mean, I'm proud, but yes, you know, I just can't help thinking, like, you know, like. I really wanted to get Fringe Guy on the show. <laughs> you really did. I Mate, really I did. Tried, I really. I tried all season. I to get Sam Mac. Yeah, I really wanted to get like a celebrity gardener on or something, but. <laughs> well, we almost did. We got Joe Griggs. That's true. That's true. But we yeah, no, I, mate, I'm just sad for the the guests we couldn't book. I guess. All right, look, it, it's a difficult thing, but I mean, there's there's a few. I mean, we've even had to sort of cut some guests that we couldn't squeeze in because we already had tonight was full so yeah there's guests that we've had to say look sorry guys you just got back to us too late you know as great as your management is um like i know that will anderson was keen to be on the show and we had to cut him because we already had joel and tegan and um uh, and scotty darlow yeah mate and well just this week i was chatting to um trent cucciarelli oh, from, from uh, Lego, Masters. lego masters yeah yeah great yeah he was dead keen. Would have loved to come on and, and, and chat. But, you know, if, you know, I said, mate, finale, and we're fully booked. So I tell is, you what, as un un uncharacteristic as it is for us, how about we have a conversation, you know, in between the questions that we're about to offer to Tegan? Um, just yep. on the, we'll, have, we'll have a chat on the side. And yep. after Tegan, we'll come back. We'll talk about this a bit more because I think it, it's. We, we appreciate that so many people have turned up for the finale, and we, that's what this is. Tonight is the finale of yep. Calm Down. Um, this is our last episode of the season. Yeah. Uh, and if you haven't already seen through this wafer-thin premise, um, you know, we, we're just it's really wondering if, if there's more that we can do to keep people happy. That's all it's about. <sighs> yeah. Well, look, let's, let's, let's go chat. Let's get Tegan in. All right. So I should introduce um, Tegan, and, and then we'll get ready to talk to her? Well, in a second, because okay. in the middle of the interview, uh, she references uh, this uh, picture. <laughs> the interview uh, that we which haven't is, yet had with her, Braden. Yeah, I've got a feeling she will. And so yeah. it's just... I'm going to uh, full screen that. That's worth looking at. Okay. This just shows <laughs> you that we've uh, completed our <laughs> having been paying attention deck. <laughs> I didn't realise it was just a slide. <laughs> yep. Just a slide. Still there. Just a bit. So um so now when here when if if it comes up, the people at home know. That's all I'm saying. That's all, all right. I'm saying. So we're about let's to, get her in here. Yeah, we're about to talk to someone who is a columnist, an author, comedian. Um she has boxed and made a comedy show out of it. Uh, people may absolutely know that she is a regular guest on the ABC two show Whovians, all about the great show, Doctor Who. Uh, and look, as you can expect, uh, we have some questions for her about Doctor Who. And we want to encourage you, if you've got questions for Tegan, let us know. We'll put them on the screen. 
We will ask question. We'll, we'll ask them to her, and any money that we get from them goes to Joel after our expenses. Yep. Um, yep. So I think that's where we go. Let's bring in the one uh, and the only Tegan Higginbotham. Look, I don't even know if this is live or what, but hey, ladies and gentlemen, Tegan Higginbotham, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, Tegan, it's it's grand that you could be here. We have so many people who want to ask you questions, so we'll give them the opportunity. Guys, ask your, comment, your questions in the comments. We'll yep. throw them to Tegan. It'll be great to get her response on those sorts of things. The first question that I know uh, will be asked already, so I'll just get straight into it, Tegan. Um, who's your favourite doctor and why? David Tennant, uh, clearly. I think I've yelled it on the television many times, and if I ever met him, it would be awkward. Uh, <laughs> I just think he's he's charming, he's brave. I would feel safe if the world was in his hands, and I absolutely want to snog him. So, you know, it's all of that. Completely reasonably. Yeah. Brandon, Tegan, Tegan, why do you want to snog your GP? I'm, confu <laughs> I'm, I'm really confused why we're talking about doctors. Yeah, especially snogging people during time of corona. Very unfair. Yeah. But, um, you know, I am I am a Doctor Who fan from way back. I'm named after a Doctor Who character. Yes. And it's, you know, it's it's in my blood to be very passionate about Doctor Who. What's your favourite episode of Doctor Who, uh, Brayden? Oh, it, it, without watching any, <laughs> um, it's hard to comment. But yeah. Mm. But no, feel free to go into it, please. Yeah, yeah please. I love, I love that they. Uh, I love the one with the um, the Delorean. Oh, yep. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. But I know oh, that they. I know they got a chick doctor, and that upset a whole bunch of snowflakes. But I'm all for, uh, you know, uh, uteruses before deuteruses and that sort of thing. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, fight I've, the power. I've got Is that many. right? Yeah, absolutely. I've got such a right. curated group of people that I'm friends with on social media that I keep hearing about, oh, the outrage about this new doctor. I was like, where? Where is it? Because I've just, I realised that I've created this wonderful little echo chamber of happy thoughts. Um, and I, wow. I really did, yeah, it didn't see it. I didn't notice as much of that stuff, but it was out there, unfortunately, of course. Wow, your social media is an echo chamber. That must be unique. <laughs> um, I can't imagine anyone else having that experience. It is just so, though, it's just people saying nice things and posting photos of their dogs predominantly. And I'm just oh, like, wonderful. man, the world's really great, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's so amazing. I mean, it's yeah. we've all taken to different um, kind of passions and, and learning new things during this coronavirus pandemic, Tegan. Uh, I, for example, have built, my, oh, sorry, rebuilt my entire Lego collection. Um, what, yes. Very happy about it too, let me tell you. Um, what have you done during this time? Have you learned a new skill? I have, actually. It, well, it started just before the, the pandemic sort of hit and, and the timing ended up being just perfect, which is that I started painting because I am a very creative person and I love being creative. It's it's the only thing I can do, really. But the, the tricky thing when you start trying to make that a job is suddenly you start trying to monetize everything you do. You know, you, you write and you have to monetize sure. that. Even your social media, it's really horrible. And you guys would understand this, of course. But, yeah, you know, you do have to start thinking about your followers and everything mm. just becomes work. So I wanted something that was for me. So what I did is started painting. <gasps> wow. And this is Ron my Swanson. <laughs> God. I'm thrilled. You'd be thrilled if you thought that. Um, so that's just one painting, but I started painting and it's been really nice to do something that's just been purely uh, for me. That, that, that's your husband, Gabriel Gatte, yeah. with a moustache, right? That's him. That's right, him right there. Yeah, uh, so that's Paul. That's one of my paintings. I've that done uh, several of them in the nude, which I won't be showing you, but um, they were great. They were really fun to do. So it's like old yeah, school nudes. Pardon? Hang on. Old Let's school nudes. Yeah. Old school nudes, I'm all for it. Uh, would he be happy with the result or was it a cold winter Yeah, were day? you generous? <laughs> no, yeah. Look, look, they're not full frontal nudes. You know, I just didn't really want to have to. Um, I, I would have run out of paint. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> ah, correct answer. Well done. Well done. Well done. But, um, no, they're, they're, I'm looking at them right now and I think they're quite tasteful and he was mm. actually very happy with the um, with the end result, which is, which is nice. I Weird, think you've though. nailed his thigh gap, which is really important to a bloke. <laughs> it was just quite funny hearing about everybody's corona journey and their, you know, their isolation journey and 
you know, talking about how, what they were doing and, you know, some people were t- kind of talking to their plants and, oh, aren't we going a bit crazy? And I was like, one weekend I'm painting my husband in the nude. You guys have got nothing on me. <laughs> the next step, of course, is to actually physically paint him in the nude, like to paint clothes on him. Yeah, well, you know what? I started thinking about things in my apartment because we ran out of campuses pretty quickly and suddenly you start looking at furniture and looking at things and going, how much do I love the colour of that chair? Mm. Paul walking through the room just casually drinking out of a coffee cup with a picture of his bottom painted on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Wonderful. Uh, it's great to see all these comments and questions coming in for Tegan. Yes. Um, okay. Tegan, you've got a, a wide media uh, portfolio, but uh, what we're most excited about tonight, I think, and, and I actually put it on Instagram early, is that tonight you complete our Have You Been Paying Attention deck. I saw that, yes. I'm really happy so, uh, to be able to lend a hand. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't know whose head, whose body I put your head on, but I, <laughs> I hope it was okay. Actually, um, that's a real. I'm going to look up that. I'm going to look that up right now. Actually, yeah. who am I? It's a, they are a wearing bit meta. a lovely dress. Mm. It was sequins, and I thought it was. She's a classy lady, and and you strike me yeah. as a classy individual. So. Is it a silly Piccola body? I was just no. thinking. Are you? Is it not? Is it not a silly? Because I'd be thrilled. No, no. Particularly her dancing normally, body, right? No, yeah, Celia is normally down the front where Ash is on that photo. Yes, they don't stick, um, And it's not a Denise mm. Scott body. So, like, it's, it's It could be a Melanie Bracewell. I mean, this has turned into the Who Are You? Have You Been Paying Attention it's, podcast. It's very exciting. Yeah. But whoever it is, they're wearing something sparkly and I'm all for glitter. I'm down with that. Uh, That's my quality contribution here, Mike. Well done. Thanks, Braden. I will ask you get you to ask another Doctor Who question in a second. Um, the, yes, the, I'll work on it. With, with the coronavirus in play, of course, it shut down all of our sport. And yes. you get a bit of an AFLW season in, but not yes. much. Uh, much. And, you know, the, the bloke season got curtailed, but that's due back next week if memory serves me. Yeah. Um, mm. what, well, question in two parts. How excited are you and have they come back prematurely? I'm not very excited. Um, I mean, of course, it's going to be nice. You know, I'm, I'm one of those people that truly believe that sport is a really important thing in Australia, and I believe that it needs to come back. Is it going to feel like a full prop season? No. I don't think anybody's expecting that. But we need sport to come back. Uh, financially, I think the clubs like really need sport to come back. And I think as, as, as a society, you know, the AFL fan, it will be nice to have that that normalcy back in our lives. I know that heading into winter, it's getting cold and I keep wanting to just do that thing that I do every winter, which is curl up and put on footy. It will be nice to have that back in my life again. Definitely. Yeah, nice. mm-hmm. um, it, it's it, You're right. I think that the money the clubs are keen on. And now I did hear a theory acknowledging that when the footy does come back, NRL um, mm-hmm. tonight and AFL next week, that there'll be no fans in the stadium. It'll just be the teams yeah. playing and that's, that's a shame, right? Because I think part which, of the enjoyment... Well, what? I mean, to be honest, the, the Giants won't notice. <laughs> oh, wow. You have to say it. Well done. I, I was going to say the Suns in that joke, but same again. I'm either way. Um, so the clubs. Yeah. They're physic- already physically distant. Um, the, the, the thing I think that uh, the best solution that I've had uh, or been given to me around how do we deal with no one in the crowd is to run uh, a competition with the members of each club mm-hmm. and find one person from the supporting base of each Ooh. team, put them on opposite sides of the stadium, give them both microphones and <laughs> a keg where they can pour their own beer from and let them have at it for the game. What do you reckon? Look, I think the idea of combining a fan with a microphone and beer is a disaster waiting to happen. But at the same time, they've got to do something because I, I remember that opening match this year mm. and it was Carlton versus Richmond and, you know, it was disappointing for me for a lot of reasons. But <laughs> not, <laughs> not having that sound in the stadium, it was weird. Yeah. It was just strange. Before that, if somebody had suggested whether they do an audio track of pre-recorded cheers, I would have said that that's diabolical. Now... I would almost consider it. They've got to do something to bring the vibe into the stadium. I appreciate you can be wrong sometimes, Tegan, and that's one of them. Um, <laughs> uh, however, I completely agree. No, no crowd you know, is horrible. You know it's what horrible. I appreciate, Malk? What, Braden? What do you that, appreciate? Uh, Thomas Baker was the fourth doctor and had the longest tenure in the role. Well done. That's very true. He did. And yeah. I, I, I just I think that's really 
great that you brought that up. Can, can yeah. I offer a question to both of you? And Braden, I'd love your response first. Um, what's your view around the Christopher Eccleston uh, iteration of the Doctor? Look, to have a to have the Doctor appear simultaneously in the show and on reality TV was a bold move. Yes. Choose Love Island was uh, controversial to say the least, but mm. Eccles, as we call him in the trade, <laughs> um, he, he delivered. He delivered. I thought his reinterpretation of the TARDIS and turning it into like uh, more a post box than a phone box <laughs> was yep. revolutionary. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. See, that's do you, do you know what we're talking about? Uh, <laughs> oh, look, I mean, your insight just really goes to such a level that I, I can't keep up with, personally. Yeah. Um, but Eccleston, the Eccleston era, what, Mulk, do you have an issue with the Eccleston era? No, in fact, he is my favourite Doctor. Um, yeah. I really, Ooh. like, I love the, the depth and the darkness that was brought in with Eccleston as the Doctor and the, just the fact that it was kind of that gruff, I really don't want to be here, however, mm. I'm fully committed to the role yeah. Uh, and playing that through. And look, that's why we only got one season of him, right? Um, that's how a lot of our guests feel on this show, Mulk. That's right. In, in <laughs> fact, Rick Teagan's probably thinking that right now. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I really loved it and I thought it was a great bring back, you know, the modern Doctor starting with Christopher Eccleston. Yeah. It, we wouldn't have had the same performances from the subsequent Doctors without him establishing, you know, the Doctor in the new realm, if we want to call it that. I remember watching that first episode back, Rose, and the moment where you finally see the mm. doctor and he puts his hand out and he says, run. I, I found that so impactful and I found, I agree with you, throughout his in his tenure, his short tenure as the doctor, yeah. he did some great stuff and his legacy is so strong. Yeah. Unfortunately, and, and, and you'd know so much about this, um, <laughs> <laughs> friend, is that... Um, you know, there was also so much stuff going on behind the scenes mm. and was apparently really unhappy, which makes me sad because he brought so much yeah. happiness to my life. Um, it would be really Hashtag nice. Eccles Heckles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, there is talk that he might be starting to warm up to the idea of coming back into the Doctor Who fold and, you know, doing things maybe Big Finish or something like that, which would be really exciting, I think. That would be amazing. And, and look, this has really become the, a brilliant spin-off of Whovians, quite frankly, Braden. I'm loving the insight that it's you're bringing. It's really good. Yep. Yep. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> that's what we're here for. Pause. Uh, there was a pause. Big pause. <laughs> I don't know what the Whovians is, Mulk. Uh, so, um, How dare you? I just introed Tegan and explained it. I love that yep. in your head you were just like, <laughs> oh, Tegan, we've only just met, yet you know me so well. Um, look, Tegan, uh, we got to keep going. This is our final mm. episode, and it's mm. been wonderful to have you on uh, because this has been uh, – uh, I've learned a lot. Uh, there's a bit of rage in the comments I'm noticing, um, and we we haven't been able to answer all the questions. Yes. So sorry. We, uh, that might be on me. I've dominated the chat. Um I just love to nerd out about general practitioners. I just love it. <laughs> so, um, Tegan, Tegan Botham, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Mole, do you have any final words before our guest has to? I did. I wanted to ask the talk? question that we ask every guest, Braden. And oh, that, we have what, become a little lackadaisical. Let's really wrap have. this up with a question, Mole. Order, order, order. Um, Tegan, what, you know, how have you been staying calm? I mean, painting and stuff is nice, but how have you within Great yourself question. been able to maintain some serenity uh, while everyone else around you is, uh, you know, breaking people's heads open and scooping out the goo inside? <laughs> uh, it's been, you know, I'm sure that you've had this probably reflected with a lot of your guests. It's, it's up and down. You have some weeks where you're like, I'm on top of this and I don't like socialising anyway. Uh, and then there are weeks where it feels a bit harder and, looking ahead, especially, you know, because I'm in the arts industry, you look ahead and you don't know what you're looking at and that can be scary and it's just like, come on. Yeah, a bit of that. Mm. But, you know, I think that um, I can't help but acknowledge how lucky we are in this country and mm. and um, I think just reflecting on that regularly, you, you do feel lucky, actually. No, that's just it. I just feel actually that I've been quite lucky throughout all this. So that's been pushing me through a bit. Yeah, that's awesome. What a great answer. Wonderful. 
Well, glad we hung around for that, really. Yeah. Definitely worth it. Tegan, if people wanted to follow you in the appropriate manner on social media uh, uh, well, or I'd read like your stuff. So at a safe distance. Please. But, uh, <laughs> that they can find me on Instagram. I think I'm just under Tegan Higginbotham. If you can spell it, I'm there. Uh, Twitter, I think I'm at Tegan MH. Correct. Hey. Uh, <laughs> Facebook, I think it's, it's just my name again. Honestly, it's there's not many of me out there. I think if you just start going through the Higginbotham bit, I think I come up because it's a, it's a ridiculous last name. Columnist, podcaster, TV presenter, panelist, comedian, um, person paints. Uh, you make me sound gentlemen. very nice. Look at you go. Ladies and gentlemen, Tegan Higginbotham, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was really nice to chat with you both. And we'll, look, we'll get the other comments that we didn't get to during the session. We'll uh, post them on your Facebook page and people can yep. follow up there. That'd be great. So good. What? That, like, I I loved, first of all, I loved the way that you're engaged in the Doctor Who conversation. <laughs> right. Mate, I, 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 to be honest, I didn't, I didn't catch any of it. What? I was, what you, uh, you were involved in it. What do you mean you wouldn't, didn't catch any of it? Oh, well, I got so excited by the, the, idea, the idea that something could continue that I, I zoned out for the whole, ep the whole conversation. I... Well, thank you very much for taking for joining us. That was great. But where yeah. were you? You're oh, out. Mate, I've been working. I've been working tirelessly. I'm remaining hydrated. Good I'm work. working up a sweat. Do you want to see? Do you want to see what I've done? Well, do you want to see what I've done? Always keen to see what you've done, Braden. Do I need to put yeah, your full uh, again? Yeah, but I think you should go down in the corner. Can you get down in the corner? Okay, I'm going to turn do that off, and I'm going to do this. Because I think nine the people want to see how this goes. And for me to learn how to point to that corner. Um, <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, this is our finale. Mm -hmm. But every good TV show finishes the same way. Ladies and gentlemen, here's something I knocked up in 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> Spectacular. <laughs> That's it, baby! Reunion Spectacular! Fifth episode Reunion Spectacular. This is amazing. Um, I'm then, made, hang on, I've made you vanish. I'm vanished. Here I am. Let's do this. That's Whoa. incredible, Brady. Mate. So just run me through this. We're coming back yeah. for one, one final... One. One. Episode. One. Re and to be clear, this is the end of the season. Next John, week's our reunion spectacular. It's it's very everything different. Every, every <laughs> very different. And you know it's different because we are going to start early, 7.30. Yeah. And Trent from Lego Masters, Trent Cucciarelli, is going to be live in the show. And you and make he's Trent. Gonna, what? And you, and you make, make Trent, Trent. And you make Trent live on the show. Yes. And he's going to answer questions from kids, from the Amazing. fans of Lego Masters. He's going to jump in, and for half an hour, we're going to be on our best behavior. It's going to be completely yes. child safe very, and friendly. Very yes. Trent's going to join us. Uh, we're going to have a great, great fun. And then yes. at eight o'clock, boot the Trent down, <laughs> put kids to bed. Will Nicholas, Sam Mack, and Will a Nicholas is coming on the show. No. Will. Well, probably. Who knows? If he wins the T-shirt, anything, you know, anything's possible. Yes. So, uh, who's coming on? Will Anderson. Will, Will Anderson is coming on. The Godfather of Australian stand-up comedy. Amazing. Sam Mack. Uh, has, Australia's favourite weather girl. Yeah, uh, and uh, he he's going to bring the Cash Cow. Hopefully, God, is that please. the right show or is it a different show? Yes. Now you've got the right show. 
great. I don't watch well, morning television. <laughs> and a genuine international celebrity music superstar to wow. round this out. That is incredible sizzle. So just let me check. Next week at 7.30 here on the Pulse Facebook page, it yep. is the 10th episode reunion spectacular for Calm yes. Down. We're yes. starting at 7.30 with our, our yep. mate Trent from Lego Masters. Family friendly. Family friendly Everyone, 7.30 start. Bring your kids. Uh, ask yep. questions. He will answer all your yep. questions about being on the show, building Lego, all that stuff. Yep. And then what it's like to meet me. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Kids to bed. Will Anderson, live from Byron Bay. We'll have Sam Mack, live from an undisclosed location in Sydney. And we'll have an international superstar musical guest. I'm so excited, Mulk. I'm so this excited. A, look at what happens when nostalgia takes hold, Brayden. Yeah, mate. And we'll probably have one of those montage things. We could get like a sure. We could get a special like uh compare, like yes. a ring announcer. Look, yeah, anything's yeah, look, possible. I, I'd imagine we'll we'll see, you know, some of the best parts, all you know, twenty seconds of the show. That shouldn't <laughs> take long. That shouldn't take no, long. No, not at all. The parts where the wheels fell off, much bigger. Um <laughs> Daniel Gibb, yes, best news I've heard all week. Zed, so excited for the reunion spectacular. That's the kind of enthusiasm what is, that we want. What does Zed mean? Did he just have a stroke halfway through a comment? Like, what does that mean? <laughs> I think so. Um, Amy Lowe's pretty excited. Sam can bring his celebrity cat, Miss Coco. I'm, I'm sure, sure he can. Why yeah, not? I, people love pets on this show. Takes her everywhere Fantastic. else. Aiden now, Brower, one more chance for Fringe Guy. Yeah. Look, anything's possible, mate. I've got a full week. <laughs> and I am powered. I'm hydrated. Well I'm ready. Hydrated. Well, that's phenomenal news. So next week, friends, we'll make sure that you know yep. about it. But 7.30 is the kickoff for our 10th episode spectacular, yep. the very ever finalist show of Calm yeah, Down that... on the internet. Until the Christmas special. But, like, <laughs> next week's it. Next yes. week is it. Who knows yep. what could happen after that, but we are done this, on the internet. This remains our finale. <laughs> um, so, which, uh, um, look, I don't know our. Uh, Darlow's coming up, uh, and nice. I, he might already be in the green room. Um, he bear was. with us, Scott. He was. He's. He'll be back. Um, he'll be back. He knows. He knows. Eight forty-five was ambitious. Um, <laughs> mate, we got we got video of the week now. Right, we do. Bro, hey, we've got to but, do our intro. Last intro ever. What? No, no. Hold your horses, mate. Okay. I got you a present. All right. Do I need to make you full this screen was... again? Oh, yeah, you probably... And put yourself down in the court. Yeah, yeah perfect. All right. okay. Mate, words can't express uh, what a joy <laughs> it has been. And people don't... And whilst, like, this this, well, this shot makes it look like I'm doing stuff, you are you do all the heavy lifting. Let, let's be honest. So I reached out to a few of the fans and some uh, American country music star whose name <laughs> I can't remember because I've had too much water. <laughs> And we've put together, for the last time and the first time, a special intro <laughs> clip for Video of the Week. Are you ready, mate? Oh, look, lock and load it. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our favourite part of the show. Oh, wait. Wait. Oh, no. No, it's not. It is. No, it's not. This Wouldn't is be a finale without a tech problem. Bingo. Let's there we go. Here we go. And go. Next is my favourite part. Video, Video of the week. week. <laughs> Say what? Video, Video of the week. Big deal. You booted me up. I didn't know what I was doing. I was trying to get out of the way of the person that I was yeah. covering up. Well, mate, um, I fully anticipated playing it again. So make me solo. Okay. Um, uh, one second, I've got to bring you back in and put you back. Look, it's a very long story that's very, very dull. Um, solo Braden. All right. Uh, I hope this is the right one. Next part is my favorite. No, part. Seamless. <laughs> Video of the week. <laughs> Video of the week. That's amazing. Never saw so many beautiful looking. Video, video. Movies, movies. Very big deal. <laughs> There you go, mate. That's just for you. Look at what you do for you. me to make me feel warm and fuzzy, mate. 
that's two amazing high quality video <laughs> edits made this week. They'll be Look, available on YouTube. Tell your friends. Absolute, and absolute uh, full full credit so, to you and all the people involved. Caitlin Bird thought that my dancing was great. I'd, look, I style it on Ellen because uh, that's who yeah. everybody who works in TV should, you know, model their dancing on. I need for your sure. water bottle, man. I'm so not hydrated enough for this. I am. <laughs> I'm remaining hydrated. None of this work. teacup shenanigans. Um, I'm going to go first, Malk. And oh, please, can you? Yep. You can catch your breath. My video of the week's a bit wholesome, actually. It's, oh, it's good. Not, it's not usual, but... This is a new just, thing for you because this isn't normally what you plumb. I know, but it just made me feel warm inside. So okay. um, it's from uh, Channel 7, so not no not. breach of copyright there. Channel 9. It's from Channel 9. Thank you to the good, good people at 9. Thank you. Um, you, need to make, you need to make me full screen. I need to do that again. Gosh, I'm so bad at this. Yeah, I know. You think I'd avoid I, love, I love being full screen. <laughs> so full screen. Oh, that'll do. That'll do. That's Very enough. Very beautiful and touching. What, yeah, what did that is? That's Guy Sebastian's uh, less talented brother on uh, The Chris. Voice. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what I love about it, Mulk, is this face that Guy you know it's just yeah that's the exact face i pull when my wife brings lamb home <laughs> like it's just <laughs> tears in my eyes yeah just happy. a beautiful thing overjoyed just, it's a phenomenal thing absolutely mate absolutely well, and with that that's the end of my show notes so um great we must be cool. getting I've, close i've still got some um you've got, got a video mate do. i've got a video of the week now mine's a really easy setup i don't know how many of you saw it but uh hazelwood coal um, power factory had four big smokestacks, uh, four, eight, eight big smokestacks that got destroyed, blown up in a, a planned event on Monday that was delayed so many times it was painful. But we got to see things blown up. And I, that, for me, um, absolutely, uh, thanks to uh, Gibbo and to, to Christy for helping me find this bit of joy um, that just, you know, it really made me consider what's the real impact? Pretty good, mate. I mean, it's Pretty... nice and environmental. You know, we yep. feel good about ourselves. And we get to see, you know, painted on faces and arms on the sides of cooling towers just falling into the ground. And I, I just want to point out, as Christy Morgan says, that that is quality entertainment. That's what that is. Now, it's what people have come to expect. Brayden, we're at a special time in the show. Stephen, yes. This uh, being a season finale ahead of the 10th uh, episode. Last episode. Next week. This is our last episode. Except we have for next week. some business to do. Mm. Giveaway time. It is time for us to give away <laughs> the long-promoted <laughs> Jurassic Park T-shirt, and I will throw the empty pen uh, probably at you from my house. So yep. it might get close. It might not get close at all. Um, Brayden, we, we discussed um, earlier, there's been lots of great people that have offered excellent um, uh, comments. Is, are there any that stand out for you? Look, um, look, the loyal fans will remember when I did some home improvement uh, work, yep. showed people how to connect <laughs> yeah. two pieces of wood. Uh, Phil Dokumanovich uh, chimed in with a nailed it. Quality. Yes, high quality. Um, yeah, look, uh, people have been casting aspersions about what I've been drinking for most of mm. the series. Not least um, of which your box. <laughs> true. Good night, Nigel. <laughs> um, uh, look... 
it's hard. It's hard, but but I'm going to call it, Mulk. Oh, okay, sure. Oh, were, were you going to call it? No, I was going to say no correspondence will be entered into. You get to make this call. It's your shirt. Yeah, great. Uh, by the way, it's not a. It's not a. What? It's not a giveaway. It's a recognition of service. So it's uh, an award. <laughs> It's not a. <laughs> it's a game. You don't of need skill. a license. Yeah, game of skill. Yes. <laughs> I want to acknowledge a, uh, the winner as someone who has been here from day one. Yes. Commented every show. Amy Lowe's and has been making her sad. Exuberant. Yes. Exuberant. A good supporter. A good supporter, and look, he has enough T-shirts already. The <laughs> man has over. The man has over eighty Superman T-shirts, but mm. I I just feel in the in my loins that he will wear this shirt with pride. So, yes. ladies and gentlemen, uh, the winner, and I am riding it right here. The Ooh, winner we get a of the Jurassic Park T-shirt, pre-loved countdown giveaway. Do, 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 do. Gibbo! Gibbo! ladies and gentlemen, thank Gibbo. You, congratulations. I hope he's still watching, or this will go down like a lead oh, balloon. Allow for the delay. We will wait for to. the delay. He's got to catch his breath. Bucks, if you'd been sitting no, in did. the green room, you would have heard and yep. seen it straight away. You would have seen me write it on the desk. But <laughs> no. Nope. Oh. Um, so, Gibbo, he's he still there. He's still there. He, Give well, us I something. So. I do know that Gibbo watches the show every week with his mum on the television at home, and she calls us the Mork and Mindy show. So. Um, I hope they've do. hung in. They've really, they've really sized up. Now the thing is, Gibbo, we'll send it to you. We need a photo of you in the shirt for the tenth episode reunion spectacular yep. next week because that's what nostalgia is all about. People yep. remembering the journey. Yep, I'm worried this that everyone really else has tuned out. Probably have, uh, um, but, but don't do that because no. we've got to bring on our final guest, and he is a good one. Hang on. Finally, Daniel Gibbers called. Oh, there he is. Thanks, guys. I'm honoured. Might have to put away some of my Superman T-shirts so I can wear it. Look, you do what yeah. you've got to do, man. Man, I'm not going to comment on your wardrobe, but I, I just know that uh, just know that we've appreciated your yeah, solidarity, as with 100%. all our fans. Yeah. Oh, look, if we had more Jurassic Park T-shirts that Braden had worn, we would give them away to more of you. And after our egos, you guys are the second reason we do this. So, 100%. Like, yeah, it means a lot. Will Nicholas has taken it hard. I know where you live, Braden French. Yep. Um, yeah, that's, so that's concerning. Comforting. Yeah. Enough of that, sure. though. People are really here to see uh, our very final our final musical guest for Calm Down ever, Braden. Ever. Yep. I mean, it's it's phenomenal. Uh, but yeah. we can't what a, shy what a away. Bang out a finish with. Look, an absolute ball, Terry, is what we're about to see right now, friends. Um, this man has toured with some of the best in Australian music. He is a rocker at heart, uh, a proud Indigenous man, and someone who has done more than his fair share of heavy lifting. So it's probably fair that we bring him in to lift with the rest of us. I've lost my mouse, so I can't even do it. Um, hopefully he can hear us. I'm about to bring him into the show. Would you please welcome Scott Darlow? There he is. There he is. Oh, this is a great start. Oh. He's just checking that his levels are fine. Yep. Can you hear him? I can't hear him. Can he hear us? I love this so much. I can That's hear right. him before. Oh. No, the whole desk has died on him or some connection okay. therein. This is good. Braden, what's your favourite Scott Darlow memory? Uh, well, um, I've hung out with Scott a bit. Uh, he headlined the Aurora in 2017. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I've seen him at a few gigs. Yeah. He, he lives not far from me, actually. Um, yeah. He's a good man. He, he, he He's in over 200 schools every year. Um, yeah. Singing, teaching, inspiring, oh, encouraging. Yeah. Um, he's performed in prisons. He's chartered yep. on Triple M nationally. Great. He's trying to send me a text message. That's all um, right. Well, what, what we might do is we'll kick him out and tell him he can jump back in. That yes. might fix his audio problem. If he doesn't unmute in the meantime. Yes. The good he thing about try. this now, he's trying what? Are you talking to him or are you texting him? This is real. No, this is live life. No, someone just sent me a message on Snapchat. I was just okay. replying to that. 
just keeping yeah. track. Um, look, yep. uh, the great thing is that we've used all our good material for tonight. So apart from reminding you that there is the 10th episode reunion spectacular next week. Um, the, I don't need, What? I don't even have like a Chris Hemsworth skin I could throw over. <laughs> over mate. Like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Could we buy a few laughs with the hammer? Probably not. No. Nah. 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 Thor! Nah. Um, <laughs> it would be great if we could. Look, I know that Scott is furiously trying to connect up, and we did have a technical rehearsal with him this afternoon. Yeah. And he's been in and out during the show, and I've been able to hear him until just when we wanted him to. He's probably just okay. muted. That's all it is. He'll appear again in a second. Um, yeah. But he's working that out. I know he is furiously stressing out. Uh, Braden, can you yep. just help me out? Uh, unless you've got a text there from, from Scott. Um, not, not yet. No, can you can you reiterate who are the guests that are turning up in our tenth episode spectacular reunion spectacular? Yeah, next week it is pretty excited. Mm -hmm. Adam Hills from Trent Lego, from Masters. Lego Masters. Yep. Will Anderson. Great, Will Anderson. He'll be phenomenal. He's a funny Sam guy. Sam Mac. Yes, Sam Mac. Sunrise's own. Sunrise's own, the cash cow himself, <laughs> and, and a genuine inter international music superstar. A genuine international music genuine. superstar that I can tell you yeah. is pretty incredible. Um, yeah. I'm hoping above hopes that when we bring this guy in right now, you'll get to see and hear Scott Rallo. Manny. Yes. Hey, how you going? Good. Welcome, mate. Uh, this is uh, honestly, this is garbage, and I'll tell you why this is garbage. Great, tell us. Yep, I set up you can't even imagine, right? Now check this out. I set up this mic, yep, I've got this flash mixer, I've got my, wow. I've got my Logi Pro camera, and you know what? So I'm, much you know, effort, and, and, and you know, yeah, only because for Braden, this is the only way yeah, yeah. live streams are done, and none of it's working. So, Manny, this is my son, he's gonna hold that camera on me. All right. oh, Manny, so great, like that. There we go. That's awesome. Now, Scotty. Scotty, does that mean you can't hear me? No, I can hear you, man. I've got you. Oh, Ripper. Right. I did want to say. Like, this is going to be amazing. Yeah, no. Nah, um, this, this is your first live gig. And now we can <laughs> see maybe last um, live gig online. But, mate, um, thank you so much for joining us. You look great. You. Yeah, Maddie's doing a great job. Hold it steady, yes, Ripper. Maddie's um, He's 11, but he's got arms of steel. Great. And it looks like you've stolen his guitar as well. You didn't have a full size one, mate, or uh, mate, this guitar is normal size, but I'm just massive. <laughs> You're massive, absolutely yeah. huge. I've been on the now, mate... challenges <laughs> for sure. But have you baked any sourdough? That's the other thing you're doing the, doing the round. <laughs> um, can you tell us? Um, we touched on it in the beginning, but uh, as two, you know, uh, white fellas who came here a long time after, yeah. Um, what does Reconciliation Week mean to you, mate? Uh, you know what, mate? I've got to be honest. It's a, look, straight up, it's a great week. But I'm, I'm yep. a bit tired of the fact that far too many schools and businesses and even churches use it for an opportunity to do their dot paintings for a week and then they put it back and then yep. back to business as usual. Reconciliation is a bit like the word sorry. It should be a verb that is enacted and lived 365 days of the year. So... It's a love-hate relationship I have with the week because on one hand, I love that it's bringing attention to things that should be brought attention to, but the bigger picture for me is one of frustration. That It's a bit like, you know, I did a, I'm doing a video series at the moment for, for schools, yep. um, which is very exciting. So I'm basically teaching a whole bunch of lessons so that schools can actually cover First Nations content throughout their curriculum in a way that teachers feel, you know, allows them to do it with integrity, right. and, you know. So it's very exciting. Uh, and I did, a, I did a lesson this week on Reconciliation Week and I likened it to, you know, every year you get your Christmas tree deco decorations out and you put yeah. up the tree and you love it, but then you put those decorations back in the shed and you don't see them again. For, you don't even think about them again for another 50 weeks. Yeah. And for a lot of people, reconciliation is a little bit like that. So, yeah. No, nah, that's, um, that's hard truth and... Um... Uh, uh, thanks for thanks for taking us there, man. Um, you're not wrong, and so uh, I, you know, I, I've appreciated um, our friendship and and the the work that you are doing and the, the your, your songs and your gifts. But I think um, 
Absolutely. Like, what does it mean if we're we're sorry one day and then um, moving right along? So, mate, yeah. thank you for that. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, uh, if we had the the full rig set up, we could have a longer chat. But um, I want to give you a chance to plug. Your, your, where can people find your music? Let's make sure we get that out there. Oh, look, get on my MySpace. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, yeah, look, Spotify is, is always good. Apple Music's even better because I get paid more. Mm. Um, but, yeah, look, all the usual places. For those for those tight asses out there who don't want to spend their money, get on YouTube. Um, <laughs> you know, there's plenty of plenty of options to hear me. Um, Excellent. But, yeah, there's a, I've got a new single coming out soon, which you'll Great. hear on the radio, which will be very exciting for me. Because, awesome. uh, you know, there's still that part of you that when you hear yourself on the radio, you're like that little kid. You just can't even believe it. So that's always good. Solid rock and roll. That's good value. It is. So awesome, I see mate. what you did there, Mock. Solid rock Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, you can see yourself out now. Um, <laughs> well, D- Scotty, thanks for thanks for joining us. Uh, you're going to close the show tonight. Uh, what song are we going to hear? Oh, look, this is an oldie but a goodie. It's called "Sorry." Great, excellent. Now right. I would That'll usually have Nidaki going, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to sing it because that's right. Because tech. tech. That's yeah, right, mate. We'll get tech. out of your way.
Hayden. Now, first of all, two things. One, Scott Darlow, amazing. That was an incredible performance. Two, Legend. people don't usually expect to see us after no. the performer has been on. They close the show. They're the talent, uh, as we yep. just saw. Amazing from Scott Darlow. Absolutely phenomenal. We thank him for being here. However, acknowledging that this is our last show, we wanted what to thank it? a few people. Who's on we your did, list? We wanted, uh, well, ev all the guests, particularly my mm. nana. Um, Great, yes. My mum. My mum is uh, mum's too shy to put in the comments, so she text messages me, but I right. can't put them on the screen. But um, thanks, mum. Uh, I'd love to thank everyone who uh, you know has been part of gags videos. Mm. Um, you know, whether it be the choir or the uh, video of the week thing, yeah. or you know, um, I'd love to thank my, my agent, my yes. agent. Um, my yeah, the lawyers, the lawyers yep. have been busy, <laughs> worked overtime. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, no, look, uh, what about you, mate? Any anyone to thank? Oh, look, I've got a pretty short list, honestly. I'd like to thank God, uh, Jesus. Uh, I'd like to thank my family for putting up with me taking the internet every Thursday night. Only one more, guys, yep. and you can have it back. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Luke, my son, for being uh, involved in all of our shenanigans. Uh, who has given <laughs> yes. as good as he has uh, taken. Uh, full credit to him. The unsung hero. A phenomenal job. And a huge thank you yeah. to the full list of our guests that I do not have in front of me. Uh, but you can yep. see them on the, the Pulse Facebook Except page. Except Gretel. Yeah. Uh, well, I actually personally am very proud that Gretel was on just because you guys went a bit toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I mean, that's uh, fair. I do apologise to those that were offended by Braden's technical gag last week. Uh, She's but, uh, not getting any Christmas cards from me. No, I let's can be, tell. Let's be uh, straight about seriously, that. for a second, though, thank you to them for taking a risk on two idiots yep. um, doing a stupid thing on Thursday nights. And, and, and absolutely, thank you to you all for tuning in and being a part of the fun. It has been so, so great. Absolutely brilliant to have you a part of it. We hope above hopes that you can join us next week for our 10th episode reunion spectacular, the very last time that you'll see Calm Down ever. We're coming back. For just one more week, it's a nostalgic band. One more show. Will Anderson, Sam Mack, Trent from Lego Masters, an international music superstar guest. You will want to come and, back. And these guys. And, yeah, that's right. Malk and Brayden, uh, we are back for your viewing pleasure and all of the rest of it. Thank you so much, Brayden. How, how do we exit this now? We've never done this. Well, I, could, I could sing a song if you want. Y you could, or I could just do this um, and say yeah. thank you very much to Brayden. Um, who honestly has helped keep this whole thing on the rails for all of the credit that he tries to take. He absolutely is responsible for way more of it than he wants to accept. It's been our pleasure to be a part of uh, your lives on Thursday night. We hope that you've been able to stay calm across the past nine weeks and just one more week, stay calm a little bit longer and join us for Calm Down for the 10th episode reunion spectacular next week. Uh, we